Hi guys, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury channel, Paul Pluto channel. Today I'm doing some paid reviews. This is for Mark. Hi Archie, it's Mark from California. Please only use my first name. I'm sending you 25 US dollars and am requesting a paid review uh, of the Tag Heuer Caliber 18 Chronograph. This is a 39mm vintage inspired chronograph that's a reissue of the Hoyer model from the 60s. I believe this was a somewhat limited edition, but there are examples out there. But they generally go for about $5,000. I own an Amiga Speedmaster 1861 and a Zenith El Primo, so I like chronographs. I admit that I really like the look of this Hoyer watch, including the unique color and two register layout of the dial. And the box sapphire crystal. Also especially like the smaller size of the case. My hesitation is that I am not a fan of tag watches and in most cases the people who wear them. The price seems steep for what is essentially an ETA 2892 movement with a tacked on dubious Dubas Chrono Module. That's not even a Valju 7750. Nothing wrong with the Dubios module. Tudor does it. And AP uses a module technology for their chronograph. So for me, it's all about the looks. And those looks are appealing. And in case you ask, I know that for the price of this watch, I can probably get a restored Hoya from the 60s that this was based on during the days when Hoya was a good brand before it was bought by TAG. But I've been burnt by vintage watches falling apart. Yes, 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 I understand. And uh, malfunctioning. And I prefer the durability and water resistance of newer watches. So, uh, the vintage option is out. The vintage watch option is out. Yes, that's um, that's a fair, 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 fair comment there. I understand what he's saying there. It's uh, it's always you got to be careful. You've got to be careful. You got to buy things that you like. That is one hundred percent for sure. Uh, your options would be greatly appreciated. Well, thank you, Mark. Thank you so, so much. So this is the, the Tag Hoyer Calibre 18. And uh, i got to be completely honest with you. Um, i got to be completely honest with you there. I would sort of tend to say that... Um, what can I say here? Um, I, I don't hate this model. I don't hate this model. I really don't hate it. Um, I personally think the only tag Hoyer that is worth going for is the tag Hoyer Monaco Calibre 11. That's right. So the Calibre 11 is very special because it's got the, it's got the two chronograph pushes on the right and the crown is on the left. Tag Hoyer was in a race to get this to market for uh, Geneva, Basel World and um, they pushed it out as quick as they can because they didn't want to be beaten with this with the um, with the market. So they, I, I personally think that is the the cool chronograph to go for. It's the, the automatic. The Tag Heuer Calibre 18, yes, it's it's a Carrera, very retro looking. I think a bit small, in my opinion. I personally think um, I don't know if I'd get a Calibre 18, okay? I don't know if I could get a Calibre 18. Okay, that's my honest opinion there. And reading between the lines here, Mark, it sounds like you really do love chronographs. I mean, anyone who buys a Zenith El Primo, fuck me dead, they're a purist. 
So if I was having a chronograph fantasy collection, chronograph fantasy collection, I'd be looking at this a bit different. I'd be saying, okay, let's tick the boxes. Omega Speedmaster, 1861. Check! I definitely get one of those. Super, super cool. Then you've got your Zenith L Primo. Fuck, check! Then I would be saying, okay, what would I buy next? Now, I would be going, I'll tell you what I'd do, I'd get myself a fucking Breguet. Get a Breguet Type 20. That's what I'd be buying. For 5,000 US dollars, you can get a really nice Breguet Type 20. It's got a Lamania movement, a Lamania, I think it's an 582 movement from memory. Uh, Lamania made all the movements for Patek Complications until recently. I'd be getting that. I would be adding a Breitling Navi Timer B01. That's a cool movement. Uh, the in-house one. I would be adding cool chronographs if you really had the money. Some sort of Daytona. Daytona. That's as a grail. Uh, and when it comes to Tag Hoyers, when it comes to Tag Hoyers, I would be saying Monaco, Steve McQueen's. Can't get cooler than Steve McQueen, Calibre 11. And a good friend of mine just bought one second hand in Australia. He paid three and a half thousand US dollars for it. Three and a half thousand US dollars. So there are absolute bargains in chronographs if you look around. So my own opinion on the caliber 18, I would be saying myself, I would really be saying myself, um, it, it's, it, it is a classic Carrera type looking watch, but no, 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 no. The Hoya, that is the cool one, is the um, the Monaco. That is the Steve McQueen. I mean, Steve McQueen was the coolest man on the planet. Okay? His girlfriend gave him a Ferrari. He had multiple Ferraris. He was just... He was just so cool. That's where I'd be going. I really think um, myself there... I, I would be going for the, the Monaco, and um, I, I say that because um, I think that's a cool piece. The Calibre the caliber 18 that you're talking about, it, it was actually uncovered at Basel World 2000 2015, 2015 was when it was uncovered. Um, it was basically inspired by the classic Hoyer uh, chronographs um, designed by Jack Hoyer, grand, good relation to the, the founders there. Um, sorry, designed by Jack Hoyer in the 50s, I should say. Um, it's... It's, it's, it's a very, very retro-looking chronograph, which is cool. Um, it's the Two Reg Chrono, which Two Reg Chronos, they kind of, they're very hot at the moment, very, very much in, in style. I love, they've got the black leather strap on that watch, which has got the, per the holes in it there, just like the Monaco. Very, very uh, cool. The dial is, is has Hoyer. Um which is something that I think is, is, is probably nicer than Tag Hoyer. Um, it's the case, the case itself, the diameter is uh, just under 39 mils. I think it's 38.5. Um, it's, it's a, so it's not a huge 40 mil big stunning thing. It's not like a Breitling, but it is, it is a, it is a cool watch there. Um, the movement itself there, it's using the Salita SW300 movement, which is a, um, it's, it's okay. It, it uses the Dubos Depraz, Dubos Depraz 2223 
chronograph module uh, it's a 37 joule movement, it's got a 40 hour power reserve um, you can see the movement, it's got the sapphire crystal display back there um, I, I would say that look, look, look I think this is a beautiful timepiece, the Calibre 18 is, is a really cool timepiece but I'd be looking at a Calibre Cal Monaco Caliber 11. I think that is cooler. It is a sexier piece. I think um, I think that's more beautiful. That's my own opinion. I think I'd be going if it was me. You're looking for a uh, a classic Hoya from from yesteryear. I I I would be going for the um, Caliber 11 Monaco. That's just my opinion, I think that is a better retro... I mean, fuck me dead! Steve McQueen, the coolest man on the planet. Coolest man on the planet. How could you not love Stevie McQueen? So, um, yeah, that's, that's my opinion. Not to say the Calibre 18 is a shitter. I kind of like it. It is a cool chronograph, but... Oh, it'd have to go Monaco. It'd have to go Monaco. I'm Paul Pluto. This is the Paul Pluto channel. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, put comments below, and tell me what you guys think of that. Quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing the Breitling on my Barton watch band. It's got the quick release system on the strap. Cut! Okay. Oh, guys, I forgot there. I forgot to tell you guys, I stuffed up one of my video ads. Mmm. You know the ad I did for Crypto Trends? Well, sorry, just a bit of depression eating, depression eating. Anyhow. Mm. The ad I did for Crypto Trends, I advertised it as Crypto Trends 2018. It's just Crypto Trends, guys. I made a mistake. Cut me some slack, would you? Crypto Trends. Go and check them out, guys. Crypto Trends. Hi, guys. Archie Luxury. Archie Luxury Channel, Paul Pluto Channel, and my good friend Tanzillin. Tanzillin. Answering super chats, it's not about the money. It's not about the money. I feel like I'm doing my passion. Tanzillin, simply the best. And uh, he's got another one for you here. How's this? Uh, it's uh, not about the money. It's not about the money. It's uh, my passion. Shakling on time. Simply the best. Now, guys, I got to tell you, I struggle to survive full time on YouTube. Please look in the description below for 10 ways you can keep me full time on YouTube. Guys, I really need your help. Please consider getting a paid, paid video review. I'll do a review on any watch, any question you want. Guys, you can sponsor me on Patreon. You can sponsor me for as little as a dollar a month. A dollar a month and that just keeps me going on full time on YouTube guys you could also I do phone calls phone calls you can talk to me for an hour on the phone Skype or WhatsApp or 50 US dollars guys I really do need your help to stay full time Ben cannot survive on Google Ads alone please help me please help me stay full time on YouTube and guys don't forget that it's not about the money it's uh, my passion. Shakling on time. Simply the best. Tanzillin, thank you. That's a sponsored bit from Tanzillin. I can do that for $150 a month if you email me directly. Look below for my email address, guys.